Thank you, Jimmy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC 190 media conference call Saturday, August 1st, UFC 190. Reigning champion Ronda Rousey versus number seven ranked Betch Cohea. Let's go ahead and get started, Jamie. We'll get right into the first question. If you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please signal by pressing star one on your telephone keypad. Once again, that's star one. And we'll pause. want an opportunity to signal. Jamie, we can go ahead with uh, Lance Pugmire from the Los Angeles Times. And we'll take our first question with, from Lance Pugmire. Hi, Rhonda. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Real good, real good. I just wanted to ask you, one of the things that you know, has made you so unique is your willingness to sort of, uh, you know, take on those assignments that perhaps some champion fighters would be reluctant to take. I mean, coming up, uh, back within like about 56 days for McMahon, and then, you know, now going to Brazil for uh, Betch. What what makes you do that? Do you feel a responsibility as a champion to do basically whatever uh, the UFC needs to help grow the sport? Yeah, I feel a lot of responsibility in that I I feel like I want to be the most reliable champion in the company. It's not that I've it's not that I've never had an injury for a fight, but I've never pulled out because of one. And whenever they've called me, I've always showed up when when I was needed. And I. I also I, I need to challenge myself and give myself more challenges so that I, I still feel like I have to give myself that underdog feeling where I still have something more and more to work for and I'm putting more on myself. Like like uh, before the Tate 2 fight when I went and filmed two movies right beforehand and then, like you said, with McMahon, I did the other one 56 days afterward and then I went and did the Davis fight when I already needed knee surgery and then, um, you know, this one taking it purposely in, in – um, when when I don't have the home court advantage, I mean that's another thing. It it just it really keeps me motivated, and um, it really I want the fans to know that even though I'm doing a lot of other things, I want to be the most active champion out there as well. Great. Do you, one of the things that Dana White spoke about in praising you was your your durability. Do you have a great explanation as to why why you possess that? My durability. Well, yeah. um, after two Olympics, and like I, I've been doing this for so long, you know, it's, it's not like I walked into a gym one day with, you know, I was like my my boyfriend was a fighter, and I decided to give it a try. You know, this is like my life. I spent my whole life doing this, and like I was just telling um, a story the other day when I was like. Um, I think 12 years old, my, my judo coach, Justin, me and him were being coached by his dad, and um, we were at this training camp, and we had to pull ourselves across the mat. I think we had to do, like, 30, like, laps, like, back and forth across the mat, like, pulling ourselves on our on our arms, on our stomachs, and um, we, like, burned all the skin off of our elbows, and, like, we were all bleeding through our geese. I remember one of my friends, like, threw up at the end of the day. We, like, trained for, like, six hours, and, you know, we were 12-year-olds. Like, <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing that kind of gnarly stuff for so long that it's like I feel so pampered and spoiled now that I'm a professional athlete. I mean, what he calls durability, I call it as being well taken care of and making my job a whole lot easier. Great, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. No and we'll take our next question from Mitch Abramson with with New York Daily News. Hey, Rhonda, how are you? Um, Rhonda, you've been very outspoken in your comments about Floyd Mayweather, especially at the ESPYs. And um, I'm wondering, you know, lots of other athletes haven't been as outspoken about Floyd compared to you. And I'm wondering just what's, what's behind it. I mean, do you not see him as a as a good role model? Uh, no, it was more of a response from the ESPYs the, the year before that when um, he made some snarky comments about me. And um, it was like a day after surgery. And I was sitting on my couch, and I was just thinking, I'm like, one day I'm going to have my opportunity to say something back, and I'm going to wait till I beat him in something. And I told myself that day, I was like, I'm going to beat him for best fighter one day, and he won't be able to pretend to not know who I am. And I, if I didn't win this year, I would have waited a whole other year, or a year after that. I would have waited four or five years if I had to. Um, but it turns out I didn't have to wait that long. But, uh, Rhonda, but the comment you said about him, you know, now Floyd knows how it feels to be beaten by a woman. Was that was that, uh, you know, referencing his past history of domestic 
uh, domestic abuse? I would think that's pretty obvious. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rhonda. Okay. We'll take our next question from Damon Martin with Fox Sports. Hey, Rhonda. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, my first question is about this last week, and I don't want to take the attention away from Betch Kohea, but I have to ask, did you get to see I, – I know Dana said he was tweeting you updates, but did you ever get a chance to see Misha Tate's performance, and, and what did you think about her earning the next shot at the title? Uh, I didn't see it. Yeah, Dana was tweeting – it was uh, texting me about it because I was about to go train at the time. But, you know, I'm not surprised. She's a great competitor and a great athlete. I've always said amazing things about her as a fighter. And, um, you know, I, I need these other girls. It's not like I could do this by myself. I need a dancing partner. And um, the analogy I use a lot is, like, these girls are like plants. You know, I have, sometimes you can grow a crop and you can harvest it year after year like Nisha. And sometimes you harvest it once and it'll never grow back. Like, I don't think Beth will ever come back after this. But, um you know, I think this might be the final season that I can harvest the, the take crop. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be a part of you. I mean, you beat an opponent so many times at some point, maybe it doesn't become interesting to you. I mean, is there still an interest in a third fight from you? Is it really just a matter of the UFC is going to, that's the fight they're going to make, so you're going to fight it? I mean, I'm just curious your interest in fighting her a third time. Well, there's fan interest, so then there's my interest. I mean, I'm interested in just defending my title as many times as I need to before I feel like I'm done. And if she's the best competitor and she's who the fans want to see, then, yeah, I'm extremely interested in doing it. You know, I'm I'm, I'm an entertainer. I'm not just here for, you know, myself. So if that's what people want to see and she's the number one contender, then, yeah, I'm totally down and she's the one that has piqued my interest after I'm done beating Bitch. And, and last question, you know, obviously there's been a lot of a lot of build up to this fight with Betch from her beating your teammates and kind of calling you out to obviously the controversial comments you made about the suicide comment. I mean, at what point did, did Betch Kohea, would you say, cross the line? Did she really kind of get under your skin? I mean, this seems like a much more personal fight for you than, than maybe some past opponents have been. I think everything up until the suicide comments could have been understandable from a marketing point of view, but when she said that is when it really crossed the line and became truly personal for me. Thank you, Rhonda. Wow. We'll take our next question from E. Spencer Kite with the province. My question is for Rhonda. Um, you had said at South by Southwest that you can't control the, perceptions, the perception of you in the public and that you don't want to assign yourself the label of a role model, but you've also always wanted to, to set a good example for your younger sister and, and the younger females in your family. With that in mind, do you take time to reflect on sort of where you're at from that standpoint and, and sort of how do you see yourself in terms of perception and, and maybe in that role model sense? Well, for them, you know, I just... I try to show my, my little sister and my, my nieces and my nephew that that ambition and hard work is a good thing and that it pays off and that honesty is a good thing and it's always worth it. And how much pride do you take and, and enjoyment do you take and do you sit back and reflect on sort of where you're at in being part of this I don't want to say revolution, but up, uprising of female athletes that are starting to get some recognition. Obviously, your Sports Illustrated cover, the great things Serena Williams has been doing. Do you sit back and take some of that in and reflect on it yet, or is that a down-the-road-once-the-career's-over situation? Um, well, I, I think revolution is the right word. I do believe that there's a cultural revolution happening, and um, I'm so proud to be one little part of it. But um, the time for reflection, I mean, they're, they're, they're few and far between. Like, after the ESPYs, I, I had to go straight home and, you know, make my training camp meal, and I really was not allowing myself to enjoy it until after I beat Betch, and then I'll have one week to kind of revel in everything, and then I kind of have to reset and um, start the cycle all over again and get ready to beat Nisha, you know? So, I mean, there's, like, little pockets where I can really revel and appreciate everything, and then... I have to really mentally put myself back in the space where, okay, there, things are awesome, cool things have been done, there's more things to do, and then start breaking 
the next goal into pieces and taking care of every one of those pieces along the way until, you know, I have my next big challenge after that. So the last piece of this challenge is I'm just going to beat Betch in the most fantastic and entertaining way possible, and then I can think about how great things are, and then I can think about, okay, what's the next step? One last one. For this camp, you decided to sort of go the Rocky Four style, you've said, and, and isolate yourself and really train hard. What made this fight specifically be the one where you kind of broke away a little bit and, and secluded yourself as opposed to some of the other ones? Well, um, I was kind of going nonstop between the last fight and this one uh, with the book tour and everything like that and, like, you know, the entourage premiere and all those kind of things. And so when I get really overstimulated with outside things besides fighting, I really kind of have to rewire my brain to go out of that mode and back into fight mode. And so I try to just push the whole outside world. Everything that isn't fighting just had to be gone. And so I thought I started camp like way earlier. I started like like um like eight and a half weeks out. I just started isolating. I started saying, okay, no more anything else. I, I cut all other kind of workout. I went out into the mountains where I had no cell phone service and nothing and started like the, my, my camp out there. And then even when I came home, it was nothing but the gym and home. And um, it was it was actually really refreshing in a way. I, I felt like really rejuvenated by that, and um, I it really reaffirmed the fact that my my hunger to fight is still there, and it's still the thing that that holds my that I have the most passion for more than anything. Awesome. Thanks for the time. Bob, no thank you. Our next question comes from Matt Jewell with Boston.com. Rhonda, um, my question is, um, so of course you're obviously not going to be looking past your opponent this weekend, but you know, looking at those sort of next steps you're talking about, um, obviously it was recently announced that you're going to be you know, co-starring with uh, Mark Wahlberg again in Mile 22. Um, is the next move back in the octagon, or, or are we going to see you back you know, on the silver screen? And what are your thoughts on reuniting with your on rod co-star? Um. Here's pretty much the plan. I'm going to beat up Betch, then I'm going to take a little, like, like a couple of weeks to rest, and then I'm going to go beat up Nisha, and then I'm going to go and, I don't know, like Thailand or wherever we decide to film. I'm going to prep for, like, a month and start filming for, like, you know, eight to ten weeks, and then go beat up the next chick. That's pretty much my plan. Um, as for working with Mark Wahlberg again, I mean, he's – Absolutely amazing. Such a cool guy. I mean, it, it's it's really nice to be able to meet people that have been able to sustain a public lifestyle and still stay really normal and cool and grounded good people. And he's an amazing example for me. And so I've, I, I'm not just excited to create something with him, but I'm really excited to, to learn from him and really be able to handle this kind of lifestyle with the with some of the grace and poise that he has. Definitely. And uh, you know, before you went into the UFC, before the UFC even had a women's uh, even had a women's division, you were saying you're very vocal about how you're going to become you're going to become the champion. Um, do you have any you know similar lofty goals for how you want to leave a legacy in Hollywood, or is that too far ahead uh, in the future from what you're doing now? I mean, there there are things I want to do that never been done before. Like I want to be the first person to be able to like in one long shot. I wanted to be able to do. I, I want to learn how to do car chases, I want to do car stunts, and I want to do high falls, and I want to do fights on my own. So I want to be able to do the first person ever to be able to do a fight scene, a car chase, and a high jump in one long shot with nobody, no stunt double, nobody else doing it. And so there's there's some little thing, little pieces of history that I think are yet to be made in Hollywood that I can do it. Awesome. Thanks for the time, Rhonda. No problem. And again, if you'd like to ask a question, that's star one on your telephone keypad. And we'll take our first, our next question from Brett Okamoto with ESPN. Hey, Rhonda, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time today. You know, one of the things you've you've spoke about leading up to this fight is, you know, perhaps prolonging it and, and making it, you know, more embarrassing, more grueling kind of fight for Betch. And you know, the first thing that came to my mind, you know, hearing you say those things is, is how does mom feel about that? Because that's how you, that's what you've always said when you've gotten questions about prolonging the fight is that you want to get in now as soon as possible, not take any damage because your mom is watching. So what has she told you and what has her take been on your, on your comments about possibly prolonging this one a little bit? Um, to be honest, my mom's pissed and she doesn't want me to do it. (laughs) She chewed me out. 
and um, she wants me to end it as quick as possible still, and I promised her that, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to take any damage. And if it goes any longer, it's just because I'm punishing her more. And I, you know, I am not going to purposely not finish her if I see something, but I could still drag it out and make the finish just a little bit more, you know, um, thorough. Okay. And, and, you know, this is a question you get a lot, but but what is, you know, your your take on it, on that topic, you know, going into the fight, just the fact that you're finishing fights so quickly, you know, consumers are, are paying money to see these fights and they're ending so fast. I mean, do you feel almost a need? I mean, you used the word earlier in this call, entertaining. Do you feel like you need to entertain more or do you feel like you're entertaining enough to these 14 second fights? Um, I mean, they're, they're well worth, you know, the, the money that the people are paying for these pay-per-views. Well, I'm, I'm, I get really like mixed feedback. It's 50, 50 where people tell me like, can you break your own record and can you do it faster or can you make it longer? And um, so I, I think that the fans and the people are aware that they're watching history. And even if it's a short fight, it's a historic short fight. I mean, if you were around back when Mike Tyson was in his prime and he was knocking all these people out right away and you couldn't tell your friends that you didn't see that because you decided you had better things to do that night, you would feel like an idiot that you didn't see it, yeah. you know, because you could have. And um, I think it's gotten to the point where people are becoming aware that this is a very, very special time. And if they decide to do something else that day, it's going to be a moment that they could have witnessed and didn't. And so, you know, I'm not going to call it and say, oh, this fight's going to end in like under 20 seconds because I'm, I'm not. Those fights that ended that quickly, I did not intend for them to end that quickly. It's just that's where, that's how it ended up because, you know, I, I improvise while I'm out there. So, you know, I'm ready for a five-round war. That's how I walk out there, and that's what I prepare for. And who knows what's going to happen. But what people are seeing is the absolute peak of the athletic woman's potential, and that is always worth the money. Okay, and then one last question. You know, so one thing you hear about in the sport when people are going through a training camp is, uh, you know, when they they don't want to get up in the morning, but they're like, it, it drives me crazy thinking that my opponent might be up and that that he or she may be running. You know, or I don't want to do the last round, but it, you know, I'm I'm paranoid that uh, you know here my the guy I'm fighting on on that date is is doing that last round. And I wonder if you ever get that feeling or if your motivation just comes from something completely different. Or are you in the gym sometimes thinking, well, Betch might be going until 11 p.m. tonight, so I should do the same thing. Do you ever get those feelings or, or does that not happen for you? Hmm. I, I've been getting those feelings ever since I was a little kid. Um, my mom told me the story. I was like 15 years old and like I, I already trained like three times that day and it was like almost midnight and I was walking out the door to go running. And my mom stopped me and she was like, like, what are you doing? You already trained three times today. And I was like, I just wanted to know that there was no other girl in the world that trained harder than me that day. And I went out and I went running on a fourth workout that day. And that's something that I always had. It's like an innate thing. And that's where a lot of my confidence comes from is that I know that I train harder than any of these girls. And I train more efficiently and I train smarter. And there's nothing that they could do to possibly try and catch up. Anything, if anything, with every fight, they fall farther and farther behind, and their own insecurity of trying to keep up with me actually ends up with them being overtrained. Because if they try to train as much as I do and as hard as I do, they will end up being overtrained. And so it's, it's actually better for me for them to have that insecurity in their mind and try to push themselves farther, farther than their body will allow because my body is just capable of taking more. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Rhonda. Thanks again for the time. Appreciate it. And we'll take our next question from Liam Ducey with Fairfax Media. Hi, Rhonda. Thanks for your time today. Uh, Rhonda, your emergence as the UFC's biggest star has really helped the UFC gain traction in Australia. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about the November card and your name has been thrown out a lot. Is that something the UFC has talked to you about and is that something that interests you? I mean, 
I would always want to come to Australia for any reason at all. It's actually the, it's the one like continent I'm missing. I think besides Antarctica that I haven't been to. And I I was actually walking with my mom like last night, and I was like, I want to go to Australia. Like Australia, and New Zealand are like the two places that I really want to go, and I haven't been yet. And um, yeah, even if if I can't come there to fight, I would still want to come there even, you know, just to visit if I could. So any any reason that I that I could come up with, I want to go. But, you know, first things first, I'm going to beat Betch, and then we're going to plan the next step. So, I think we lost him. Let's go ahead and get to the next question, Jamie. We'll take our next question from Alex Oates with Harold Sun. G'day there. Uh, my question is for Rhonda. Um, the last caller, I guess, stole my thunder a little um, in terms of uh, Melbourne and UFC 193. Um, just to add a little bit to that, Rhonda, so is there a chance you, you, your next fight after Batch could be Misha Tate in Melbourne, UFC 93? There's a chance that I could be under 56 days from now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah there's, there's definitely a chance. I wouldn't be surprised by anything. I wouldn't be surprised if they asked me on the mic right after I got done beating the crap out of bench if I'd want to go fight in Australia. You know, nothing would surprise me now. Yeah, but you'd be happy to take, you know, obviously you both um, high-profile Americans and um, and uh, probably two of the, the best w women fighters um, in the world. Would it bother you to, I guess, take that off your home soil and fight in Australia? Not at all. I mean, if I'm willing to fight a girl in her hometown where she has a home field advantage, I mean, I obviously would have no problem going to Australia, which is not just neutral territory, but absolutely gorgeous neutral territory. Very good. Thank you very much, Rhonda. I appreciate your time. No problem. And again, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, that's star one on your telephone keypad. And we'll take our next question from Stephen Lieberman with Culver City Observer. Yeah, this is from Rhonda. Uh, you spoke. You speak a lot. Um, you've spoken a lot during this press conference about your childhood, and um, I was curious uh, if you could elaborate a little bit on that and tell us um, what age were you when you when you got interested in martial arts, and who was your inspiration, um, and what what who were your role models and influences, you know, fighters out there at the time, and uh, how you developed such great confidence? Uh, well, I started judo when I was 10, and um, my first tournament was on my 11th birthday, so I, I usually count it from there. And um, my main inspiration was my mother. She was the first American to ever win the world championships in judo. And it's, it's really easy to think that you're capable of anything when you have a world champion walking through your living room, you know? Uh, Excellence was expected in my family, always. And me and all my sisters, we were told you could do whatever in the world it is you want to do, but you just, you have, you know, you got to be the best in the world at it because that's what you're capable of. And my confidence really just came from years and years and years of hard work. And, I mean, I, I would be, you know, 11, 12 years old, and I would fight in two different tournaments in a weekend in three divisions in you know, both tournaments, and then, so that's six divisions in a tournament, and probably four matches in each, you know, and, and that's just, it, every, almost every weekend or every other weekend when I was a kid, so I'd, I've had thousands and thousands and thousands of, of matches, and so much more competition experience than these girls could ever have. I mean, how many matches does Betch really have? Under 10 in her whole life in any sport? I mean, I've had thousands and thousands and thousands of matches. I've had times where I've, I've been planted on my face and my entire body scorpioned over, but I had to not touch my toes to the ground because that way it would result in a score, and then I'd have to jump up and find a way to win anyway. I've had fights where I had my elbow dislocated and had to pop it back in place and ended up throwing the other person in the last few seconds with the arm that was just dislocated because it just had to happen. I mean, I've been in, in every single situation that you possibly could think of. I've been as sick as possible I've, and, and still come out and won anyway. I've had fights where I, 
I had such a terrible weight cut that someone jumped on top of me and I ended up throwing up in the middle of the match, but I had to wipe it up with my own arm, on, like, under me, so the referees didn't see it and I wouldn't get disqualified, and I still came up and smelling of vomit, I fucking won anyway. I mean, I've had so many thousands of experiences that this girl could never possibly have between when she decided that MMA was a cool idea till now, and she'll never catch up. And that's what confidence comes from. It comes from overcoming, and I've overcome so much more than any of these girls possibly ever could. And you, uh, your, your role models or, or who you were inspired, you know, growing up to uh, fight like or be like, uh, whether it be a male or a female athlete, or you just f- feel like you're unique? It was my mom. Mm. You know, it really, it really was. She was... She wasn't just the, the first American in history to win, but she was she was innovative. She tore her knees out when she was 17 years old, and back then, the way the women fought were like very proper, technical, standing Japanese-style judo. And because she had no knees, she had to find a way to win around that. And so she got to be the absolute best at the things that everyone else was the worst at. And, all, you know, it wasn't really trendy for girls to hit, lift weights and become strong and, and really pay attention to conditioning. And my mom did that. It wasn't really considered proper judo to be uh, a ground-focused fighter. So that's what my mom did. She was the original armbar lady. And because she filled all the holes that everybody else had, that's what gave her the opportunity to be the best in the world. And that's the example that I like to follow. Yeah, um, it's nice that you cherish your mom like that. You're lucky to have have your mom, and thanks for your time. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Damon Martin with Fox Sports. Uh, yeah, a couple questions for Betch. Uh, Betch, obviously, you are the underdog in this fight. I think everybody knows that. Uh, but does that take off some of the pressure, you know, considering, you know, how highly touted Ronda is going into this fight? Does it take any of the pressure off you being the underdog? Christine, are you still there with Fetch? Yes, yeah, just uh, going to answer now. Okay. Uh, Tomada a ser a ver, é, pra mim é totalmente normal, eu acho que pela minha história de vida, quem conhece a minha história de vida, é, não, não se surpreende, eu tive que enfrentar o mundo, enfrentar a família, enfrentar até a, a, a razão, a, a, a loja das coisas, então para mim, é, ser a zebra para mim não vejo nenhuma desvantagem, é, entendeu? até porque a pressão maior é para a Honda, eu não tenho nada a perder, ela, assim, ela tem o futuro a perder, eu só tenho a ganhar, eu só tenho a, a conquistar o meu sonho, então eu não vejo nenhuma pressão, estou muito bem. Uh, she said she is used to being the, the underdog uh, because of her life story, of what she had to, to face uh, to get where she is today. And uh, so being an underdog is not a advantage for her, but the contrary, the, the disadvantage is for Rhonda because she has what to lose and she doesn't. Uh, but the contrary, she has a, a belt to win and Rhonda has it to lose. And I know that, you know, obviously, you know, we know you are a striker. Uh, you like to look for the knockout. Uh, have you seen any tendencies, without giving away your game plan, but have you seen tendencies or weaknesses in Ronda's striking game that you feel like you can expose? Yeah, I think it's good. My game is on the side, and I will be able to do it. Né? Então, assim, o jogo da Ronda é sempre muito falho pelo fato dela sempre é, buscar sempre a mesma coisa em todas as lutas. Né? Então, assim, é, ninguém nunca viu Ronda trocar, ela nunca trocou com ninguém. Então, é, eu adoraria que ela cumprisse a palavra realmente e, e viesse realmente a trocar um MMA comigo, de verdade. Eu acho que é, ela disse que tenta perdurar isso com a Michel Pedro, mas eu não vi isso. Eu vi ela sempre tentando derrubar a Michel Pedro quase os dois rounds inteiros, então é, se ela, ela vier assim, é, eu quero que ela entre no jogo, mais completo no jogo do MMA completo, vamos ver que vai dar, eu acredito muito, muito que eu vou conseguir nocauteá-la e assim, mais rápido possível, acho que no primeiro round eu quero nocauteá-la. 
Uh, she said that uh, Rwanda has almost, uh, has almost the same game, and uh, they'll find a batch, the same batch, but uh, 10 times better. And uh, she said that Rwanda game, Rwanda's game is uh, failed because she's always searching for the same thing, uh, to go on the ground. And she hopes that Rwanda keeps with her promises, uh, that is to, to really fight, to tr trade and then make fights. Uh, with her and not going directly to the floor. Uh, she wants her to to maintain her promise and uh, not do what she always does because she has a, the she's not the, the fighter that always goes to the ground as Rhonda is. And last question for Betch. Uh, obviously, Rhonda has been a dominant champion, the, the most dominant champion in the UFC. Uh, if everything goes well and Betts wins this fight, you know, is she open to giving, you know, obviously Ronda getting an automatic rematch? Would she be okay with that idea of fighting Ronda twice in a row if she's victorious this weekend? Ah, tudo isso posso tentar duas, três, até dez vezes. Eu, eu já tive que ter ido aposentar em vida. Estou no caminho certo para isso. É, eu acho que eu passei. Eu acho que eu ter sido tão é, subestimada, tão humilhada quando eu decidi é, lutar pela mulher, que eu não entrei na brincadeira. Eu realmente eu tenho um sonho assim, de fazer história. Eu não quero só passar na história do UFC, na história do MMA. Eu quero fazer realmente um legado. Eu quero escrever realmente meu nome na história. Então, acho que agora chegou a minha hora, é o meu momento. Graças a Deus que, que eu vou ter essa oportunidade de lutar e graças a Deus que é aqui no meu país. Então, agora é o meu momento de começar agora a escrever meu nome na história. Eu acho que quando você pega o cinturão, é o começo da história. Então, eu, 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 aí sim que eu vou ter que passar lá bem mais para provar que eu sou melhor do mundo, nem que seja eu ter que lutar com ela dez vezes para isso. Um, she said she's uh, willing to fight uh, Ronda uh, as many times as uh, it's needed, two, three times before, it doesn't matter. And uh, her dream is to retire uh, undefeated, and she doesn't mind being the underdog because uh, that uh, makes her want to, to win harder. Uh, and she wants to leave, uh, retire with uh, a legacy. She wants to make history. And uh, the opportunity of fighting in Brazil and uh, winning the belt is uh, it's only the beginning for her to continue her history, making history and making legacy. And uh, she doesn't mind how many times she has to fight with Ronda. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Dave Diebert with Post Media News. Hi. Uh, thanks, you guys, for the time. Uh, just a couple quick one, quick ones for uh, for Ronda. Um, in your book, you uh, it's just an anecdote that I remember. You uh, you said how. Um, you only throw, I, I think I'm paraphrasing correctly, that you only throw leg kicks when you're, you're emotional. Um, how do you go into a fight like this where maybe emotions do get a little high and not let those emotions get the better of you? Well, for one, I won't throw any kicks. <laughs> um, you know, I just concentrate on my first exchange and that's it and I improvise from then on out. And um, there's once you're in there, it's like the, the emotions are gone. It's just, it's just observations and decisions and priorities of what to do. And that's what I like most about fighting is because that's when the emotions go away. I'm so emotional when I'm outside of a fight that fighting is my, my escape from emotion. Right. Um, no, I guess just, just a nice little segue, I guess, um, uh, about things that you do enjoy. You, you talked about it, but, but so busy all the time, go from fighting to this to the next project. When do you take time through all of this to just enjoy your efforts? You know, do you, uh, if, if, if you could, maybe just a couple little examples of just sort of the day-to-day -day things that um, you're just able to um, take in and just enjoy after, uh, after all the work has put you in the position to enjoy it. Well, like, since the last fight till now, I really didn't take any time. Like, that's one of my problems is I'm very bad at resting. And um, that's why this fight I actually went through, like, 
I, I consciously, like, I'm like, okay, I'm going, I'm really going to rest this time because I have a problem where, like, I'll go win and I'll go defend my belt and I'll be at the gym, like, two days later because I just don't know what, what else to do with myself. And um, so I brought my whole family out here, partly because I want them to all personally see me beat the crap out of Fetch after she disrespected them all. But then I'm also going to take them all, like, resorting and, and stuff and my my... My little nephew's even coming, so I'm I'm really excited about that. He's like the newest addition to the clan, so <clears throat> it it, it kind of sucks because he was born right before the um, Kazagano fight, and then I got to see him for like a week, and then I went straight into camp, and I didn't see him at all. I didn't see him again until he was already like, you know, eight weeks old or something like that, and so um, it's it's hard because I get pulled away from my family a lot, and so I um I, I purposely went on my way. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna do that again. And then because then I went on the book tour and all that stuff, so then I didn't I didn't rest at all. And so I, I purposely I'm like, okay, I planned it like months in advance of that I'm gonna spend like I get like four days of vacation, <laughs> but I'm um, I'm pretty excited that I'm going to do these four days. I'm going to do it. And then um, even my coach was telling me, and he was like tell me that I really need to rest this time and he wants me to take like 20 days at least to like if if anything only come to the gym like three days a week you know over 20 days um which is like him trying to get me to rest you know it's uh I just I don't know I I, I have this feeling all the time of like uh, I was talking to my mom about it just now it was before this call we were walking on the beach and I was just like telling her she we both kind of have the same thing where I have this I can't shake that feeling of like I'm about to be evicted, you know, and like that I need to do as much work as possible all the time. Even when I, and the, so that's the thing that kind of sucks about fighting is it's not a nine to five. You don't work from nine to five. It's I can always find more work for me to do. It never ends. And so like even when I'm not like training, I can find other things. And like I have like sometimes it feels like I have several careers going on at once. And that's one thing I'm still trying to do is really to to rest and reflect and, and enjoy more because it's going, you know, I, I have a lot of time left, but there's only a finite amount of time and one day it's going to be done and I want to know that I really enjoyed myself while I was doing it. But, I mean, I do enjoy it. That's why I can't stop. You know, I'm back in the gym because I love to be there. My, my happy time throughout the day is, like, I wake up in the morning and I make my coffee, and when I drink my coffee, like, while driving to the gym, and I get to listen to my music in the car, I mean, I'm really happy. And when I come to the gym, I, like, I run from the car into the gym because I'm so happy to see everyone. And I just, like, want to go say hi to everybody. I, I give every single person in the gym a hug before I do anything. And because I just, I love them so much, and I love to be there. And, like, that's the place where it's, like, I don't have an, a first and last name when I'm in the gym, you know? It's, it's a first name basis place, and that's where I rest, and that's what I love. That's my vacation. And if <laughs> your job is your vacation, then you're doing something right. So, I mean, even when you're walking along a beach like that, you still have a difficult time just letting your mind. Um, I mean, you talked about like listening to your music in your uh, in your car. You know, it seems you tweet about that a lot. It seems like you you know have some uh, have some good times there, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, just just little little things like that. Um, you you still have a difficult time, or I guess you just you 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 not always separating them. The uh, um, able to completely give yourself some distance. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone outside and walked on the beach unless my mom came and knocked on my door and made me go out because I'm just sitting and resting in my room because I want to be, you know, as rested in the best shape possible for when I beat the crap out of bitch. So I just will not leave my room. And, like, my mom had to come and grab me and force me to go walk outside, even though we're on this beautiful resort by the beach. Because sometimes I need that help. I need that help to, like, be, like, enjoy, rest, take it in. It's not all about just, like, I just get so super ultra-focused. I think it's hilarious when people are like, she's doing movies and she's like going to lose her focus and she's all this stuff. I'm like, wow, you guys are like counting on something that's really the opposite of my problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks again, Rhonda. Thanks. And we'll take our next question from Adriano Albuquerque with Globo.com. Hi guys. Thanks for the time. Uh, I'm going to ask Betty a couple questions in Portuguese. 
Uh, Beth, você está ouvindo aí a Ronda né, falando, em cada, em cada resposta dela que vai te bater, que vai acabar contigo, é, e falando né, várias vezes que está muito emocional por causa de, dos comentários que você fez quanto ao suicídio, enfim, é, isso te faz sentir que você está na cabeça dela, que você é, conseguiu é, trazer algo dela, tirar ela do foco dela de repente, acho que você ganhou uma vantagem nisso. Uh, he asked if she uh, by uh, when listening the the comments of Fronda uh, that she's going to hit her she's uh, uh, she's gonna knock her down it was the comments of uh, she with the suicide uh, she she felt that she was in inside Ronda's head and uh, that makes her in a kind of advantage. <laughs> Ah, primeiramente, assim, essa história do suicídio foi muito bem claro, não tenho mais nada para falar com isso, isso foi uma interpretação da Ronda. Então, é, eu acho que isso só mostra um pouco duas coisas para mim. Ou ela se mostra realmente que ela tem é, o psicológico realmente abalado, facilmente abalado, ou então ela se mostrou uma grande pérdida. Realmente ela está de parabéns com uma atriz. Não sei, estou na dúvida se ela tem um psicológico fraco, ou se ela realmente é uma grande atriz que afetou muito bem, porque quando você tem uma, uma trauma muito grande, você não fica vendo qualquer resposta, qualquer câmera para falar sobre o assunto para chamar ele. Então, eu acho que quem está querendo promover isso é a Ronda. Então, se for realmente verdade essa dor, dor no coração dela que ela fez, realmente ela se mostrou realmente muito fraca psicologicamente. Eu realmente consegui entrar sem querer, porque eu realmente não falei com intenção. Mas se ela quiser achar que realmente eu falei com intenção, eu não tenho problema nenhum quanto a isso. E, e ela que está querendo bater em mim, é, na minha na, na luta aqui na minha casa, é, fica até, eu realmente não consigo nem acreditar porque ela tem 11 lutas e em 11 lutas ela não conseguiu dar o um mundo nem machucar ninguém. Como é que ela tem é, ainda moral para chegar e dizer que tem capacidade de querer me machucar? Então, acho que quem tem mais a perder é ela e quem vai ser realmente machucada, quem, vai, quem quer humilhar acaba sendo humilhado. É a lei da vida. Então, eu estou para isso. Uh, she said, uh, as the story of the suicide was already clear, it was a misinterpretation, and uh, if she didn't really live in doubt, uh, if Rhonda's uh, psychological side is was really shaking, or if she's a really good actress and she's uh, playing a very good role, because when you have a real trauma, You don't go at uh, any reporter to say about it, to show uh, that really affecting. So that's shown that she's a, she has a, a, weak, a weak side. And uh, she's saying, uh, as uh, trying to hit her uh, in her own house, she has a lot of fights. And uh, in those, all those fights, she don't, doesn't have one punch. So who often tries to humiliate too much is uh, the one who is humiliate, humiliated. And she wants to see uh, Rona trying to give her one punch. So uh, the person that who's really going to have it is, really, is Honda, not her. É, Beth, e também essa, essa preparação para a luta, né, na, nas entrevistas e tudo mais, você acabou atraindo muita atenção para ti com esse comentário, né, e também é, é, você viu todo o lado ruim também disso, né, da, da... o que, que você aprendeu com a atenção que você recebeu é, desde que foi anunciada essa luta? Uh, he asked, uh, after the preparation of the fight, of the interviews, uh, after the comment of the suicide, the negative attention that she had from the media, and uh, what she is waiting for the, the fight after those comments, what's her preparation? Uh, 
eu não, eu não me arrependi nada do que eu fiz, ao contrário, eu acho que eu estou muito orgulhosa do meu trabalho. Eu estou disputando o título mundial aqui é, no meu país, na minha casa, tudo que eu sempre sonhei, é a chance da minha vida. Então, eu tô, eu tô, é, todo mundo quer ver o final dessa história, como é que vai ser. E estou sendo muito sincero, tudo que eu falei, eu falei de coração, eu realmente... Provoquei, sim, a Ronda, porque realmente ela tem o que eu quero, ela tem o um cinturão. E eu provoquei com sinceridade, eu falei o que eu penso, coisa que muita gente não tem coragem de falar, que a mídia coberta em relação à Ronda, porque foi feito uma imagem dela de uma heroína, de uma super mulher, é, de uma querem fazer a imagem dela de uma, uma, uma heroína mulher americana. E, então, realmente, eu vi isso, vi brechas, vi falhas, no jogo dela, vi para falha esse psicológico dela, vi coisas que falei realmente que queria bater nela, queria bater na rua dela, porque realmente eu acredito que eu posso tudo isso, nada que eu falo é de duvidoso. Se realmente falei que queria lutar com ela, lutar pelo título, porque, é, porque realmente eu me fiquei capaz de realizar esse meu sonho. Então, eu, eu só fiz aprender coisas boas com isso. Eu não me posso se, a, se a, os fãs delas dela ficou triste comigo, eu não tenho problema. Eu, quando eu sei que quando eu estiver com, com o cinturão no meu ombro, eles vão me escutar melhor e vão ver que eu estava com certo com razão em tudo isso que eu falei. Well, uh, she said that she's not regret of anything she said, no comment. She's I can sure she's very proud of her job and uh, of her work as well. And uh, this fight is a, a opportunity for her life because she's fighting at home. She's gonna work at home. And everything was honest, was sincere, and she provoked because she had, uh, because Ronda has what she had, what she wants, the belt, and she's going after it. And uh, the media made of Ronda uh, an image of uh, the American hero woman, and uh, she's only saying that she can hit her, that she can knock her down, that she can finish her. Uh, and she said that she said that she can do all that, she can beat Ronda because she seems uh, flawed. She's seen her weak uh, psychological side, and she knows that she will win. And when she wins, uh, the fans, the Ronda fans that were disappointed with her, and they'll listen to her more, and they'll pay more attention in who she is. Obrigado, Beth. Thank you, guys. And we'll take our next question. Obrigado. 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 With UOL. Uh, hi, guys. I will do a... Uh... Uh, a couple of questions in Portuguese for Betty. Or Betty, tudo bem? É, o, o, a trocação sempre foi seu ponto forte, mas é bem difícil acertar a Ronda. Você acredita que tem alguma chance se essa luta for pressão de vencer? E como é a sua primeira luta de cinco rounds, você se vê preparada para caso for por decisão? Uh, he asked uh, the uh, provocations or showcations uh, that happen uh, will affect the fight. And uh, it is her first fight with the opponent that always fights to the floor. And she said, um, he asked if she really has a uh, thing that she has opportunity to win. Uh, eu sou uma lutadora moderna, sou uma lutadora de MMA. Eu não sou aquele tipo de lutador que vem do jiu-jitsu, vem do judô, vem do boxe e tenta adaptar sua arte para a luta. Eu já comecei a ser adaptada para lutar em qualquer situação. É, como eu sou, eu sou nova nisso, eu já entrei na academia é, para treinar MMA, na de tudo. Então, eu não me vejo assim nenhuma situação que me deixe desconfortável. Eu não, o chão não me deixa desconfortável, o pé não me deixa desconfortável, o cair não me deixa desconfortável, porque eu já fui treinada, já fui todos os dias treinando tudo isso. Né? Então, assim, geralmente, quem é de jiu-jitsu, quando vai tentar trocar, realmente se fica meio desconfortável, porque você sai da sua zona de conforto de anos e anos e anos. Então, assim, nada me incomoda. Eu não tenho medo de cair, eu não tenho medo de lutar em pé, eu não tenho medo de derrubar, eu não tenho medo de, 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 de trocar, é realmente porque realmente eu sou lutadora do MMA, bem adaptada para tudo, em todas as situações. Uh, she said that she's a uh, modern uh, and being a fighter. She's already uh, adapted to fight in any situation. Is it uh, on the floor? Is it on the, the air? Uh, she's not uh, only, she didn't practice only to do a box. She didn't come only from one uh, specific fighting. Uh, and when she entered the, the, to start the fight, 
she learns anemia by itself, not only one type of fight specifically. So any situation, uh, she's very comfortable. Is it uh, uh, on the floor or standing? Uh, while somebody that uh, comes on from jiu-jitsu, when it's on uh, standing, fighting standing, it's very uncomfortable because it uh, runs out of her comfort zone. So she doesn't see any problem, and uh, mm. for her it's very normal. E você está preparada para uma luta de cinco rounds? Como é que está a sua preparação física para isso? And uh, if she's prepared for a, a five round fight. Ah, eu sempre me preparei para lutar em cinco rounds. Até quando eu lutava só três rounds, eu sempre fui preparada para lutar cinco. Então não tem problema nenhum. Hoje, hoje como eu vou lutar cinco rounds, então eu sempre fui preparada para lutar dez. Então, assim, a minha academia tem essa, essa característica de sempre é, preparar o atleta para muito além, não só o além, mas muito além do que, do que, é, do que é, é pedido da regra. Se a regra pede três rounds, a gente se prepara a gente para lutar cinco, seis rounds, e se luta cinco rounds, a gente está preparado para dez, no mínimo. Então, eu estou com gosto de gás aqui. Uh, Obrigado. She said that she's always prepared to fight. Uh, she's she's prepared to fight uh, five rounds. The the gym that she uh, that she works when it's a three round fight, they they train her to fight fight five six. Almost always the time is double. So if uh, it's a five round fight, she's ready to fight ten. And uh, she's very very prepared. The 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 gym is very used. To prepare the over the the capacity that the the fight's gonna call. Obrigado, Betty. Thank you, guys. Obrigada também. And that does conclude today's question and answer session, Mr. Schaller. At this time, I will turn the conference back to you for any additional or closing remarks. Thanks, Jamie, and thank you to Rhonda and Betch for joining today's call. Safe travels to everyone making their way to Rio. Our media events kick off on Wednesday. Have a great day. UFC 190 this Saturday live on pay-per-view.